Hello and welcome back to another Elden Ring video by yours truly. Today I'll be discussing a tier list I made just for this video. Its topic? Ashes of War on Colossal Swords. This video will focus on what I think are the best and worst Ashes of War to use on a Colossal Sword. Like the rest of my videos, this tier list will only apply to PvP, but this time, it's going to apply to both duels and invasions. Just as a disclaimer, you must know that this tier list is based entirely on opinion and personal experience. Things like tournament results or poll results will not be factored into this tier list. I'll keep this intro short because we have a lot to cover, so without further ado... This tier contains all of the overpowered ashes you can put on your colossal sword. These will do whatever you need and more, and they will do whatever you need extremely well at that. Looking at the competitive duels rule set, all of these ashes of war are banned. Not surprising in the slightest. We all saw this coming. Quick Step and Bloodhound Step have been problematic since day one. While they have been nerfed, they both retain what made them overwhelmingly powerful in the first place. They simply do it all. You can use these ashes to initiate offense, disengage and return to neutral, backstab counter, become a flying ball of invincibility, and something I forgot to mention in my Quick Step video, you can use both Quick Step and Bloodhound Step to escape a good amount of true combos that can't be rolled out of. Pressing your Ash of War button out of hit stun in most cases will allow you to perform your Ash slightly before you can roll. All these benefits without any drawback. You can't really even argue about the FP cost being a drawback as it's among some of the lowest FP consuming Ashes of War in the game. Anyways, on to the others. Royal Knight's Resolve and Determination are essentially guaranteed damage, and an alarming amount at that. While significantly higher in FP cost than the Step siblings, they share the benefit of being nearly unpunishable, even on prediction. If you give someone with a Colossal Sword even an inch of space to breathe, their next hit will likely take out 65-80% to 80 of your health bar if it doesn't outright kill you in one strike. Although Phantom Hits can dispel this buff, reapplying it is nearly instant, and you can roll out of the animation very quickly. You better not block it either, because the stamina damage increases drastically when active. It will guard break most defenses with ease if blocked. As stated before, it's banned for many reasons. This tier is composed of the old Reliables. Most of these Ashes of War will do one thing extremely well, or do many things very good. Beast Roar is reliable for what it is. A relatively fast projectile attack that demands respect from opponents that like to play outside the max range of a Colossal Sword. This Ash of War complements the Colossal Sword moveset quite well, as having a fast projectile to punish at medium to long range will help you out in many situations. Use this to punish your opponent's attempts to use healing, consumables, buffs, spells, etc. As long as Colossal Swords are, sometimes closing distance can be difficult with how much stamina they consume. Chilling Mist and Poison Mist do essentially the same thing, what is that exactly? Everything it needs to, and more. Apart from granting you a status effect buff to your sword, the horizontal slash is incredible for roll catching, covering a wide area in front and to the side of you. The forward momentum on this attack, paired with the length of your sword, can really put your opponent on the hot seat if they don't roll properly. This ash also grants a healthy amount of hyper armor as well allowing you to tank things that your light attacks can't. Getting a clean hit with this ash will usually proc frost or poison in one hit. Golden Land is absolutely obnoxious in every application. It's relatively safe to use at every range. Increased hyper armor during the attack paired with a large holy explosion that spawns a handful of holy bullets that track surprisingly well prove for an attack that you're forced to respect whether you like it or not. 
This doesn't sound too bad at first, but it doesn't have a whole lot of end lag, so you can spam the hell out of this move to inflict large amounts of mental damage on your opponents. Just be on the lookout for ranged combatants, as using it willy-nilly against a smart mage can be dangerous. Use this ash to disengage from status effect users and pop a bolus if need be. Everyone and their mom knows about Giant Hunt. Incredible amount of forward momentum for punishing backward rolls. The bane of every crouch poking Colossal Sword user. It also rips out damage as you all know and provides hyper armor. Not much to it. Does great at what it needs to do, which is all it needs to do. Raptor of the Mists works well with all weapons that have a good crouch attack. Colossal Swords have a great crouch attack. Therefore, yes. It's nearly unpunishable as it can cancel into itself and a crouch attack extremely fast. This acts as a near impenetrable wall of defense that can only be countered with a hard callout or read. Frame 1 invincible moves are always great. Lightning Slash is absolutely nuts. While a bit slow on startup, it more than makes up for it in range, damage, buffing, and combos. This Ash of War excels at many things, and when it's used on a Colossal Sword, it gains the range it needs to become a highly threatening Ash of War. Landing the Slash part of this move will true combo into a Light Attack, of all things. If you miss, no big deal. Your weapon gets a lightning buff regardless, so you still have reason to use it, even if you hypothetically miss 100% of the time. Lion's Claw is the ultimate Uno Reverse card. What it lacks in tracking and attack startup speed is redeemed through its high damage output, frame 1 super armor, and disproportionately low end lag. Hyper Armor in Elden Ring is a shell of its former self when compared to its inclusion in previous titles. Lion's Claw is the remedy that you Hyper Armor trading enthusiasts crave. In a game where Colossal Swords can be poise broken by fist weapons, sometimes it's good to have an attack that is immune to poise breaks. While more beneficial in outnumbered situations, Lion's Claw provides zero damage reduction. So be careful when choosing your moment to strike, lest you be nuked by three Reduvia wielding maniacs. This Ash of War will let you fight on until every last bone in your body has been shattered and every last drop of your blood has been spilt. Use this Ash of War to capitalize off a host or ganker's naturally brash tendency to spam high poise damaging attacks or projectiles when they think it's safe. It might just provide the opening you need to take down a furled finger or host. Storm Stomp has been amazing since day one. There's not much I can say about it that most of you don't already know, so I'll make this brief. 1. Nearly instant hyper armor startup that has higher poise value than your Colossal Sword light attacks. And 2. It allows for you to combo a light attack off a successful stun and a heavy attack in some specific cases. These conditions being you must hit with the later active frames of Storm Stomp and must be using a Colossal Sword with an overhead slam such as Watchdogs or Troll's Golden Sword. Watch this video for a more detailed explanation. While lacking in range and poise damage, Storm Stomp provides you a reliable combo tool that excels at trading thanks to its high hyper armor values and excels at roll catching thanks to its lengthy duration of active hitboxes surrounding the move. Sacred Blade is your standard issue 2 for 1 special. A safe, reappliable buff and a solid projectile attack in one Ash of War? Sounds like S tier material to me, like Lightning Slash. This Ash of War provides you with a relatively long lasting buff to your weapon. While not quite as quick to activate as Beast Roar, the projectile velocity, or the rate at which the projectile travels to in its given direction, is nearly in the same ballpark as Beast Roar. As stated before, having a projectile attack to supplement the relative lack of range that a Colossal Sword, or most melee weapons for that matter, may have, is hard to go wrong with. Ah yes, Warcry. Another 2 for 1 special. A direct increase to your weapon's attack rating paired with a nice new heavy attack that boasts insane amounts of hyper armor that also combos into a light attack. Hitting the heavy attack into light attack combo usually hits over 1000 damage with no external buffs other than Warcry itself. This Ash almost made it into S plus tier. 
but you'll rarely land that heavy attack combo due to its susceptibility to being aim punched. Regardless, Warcry offers a reliable increase to your attack rating while being nearly unpunishable on reaction. Like Lightning Slash, if you miss your heavy attack 100% of the time, you'll still benefit from the attack buff that you can safely reapply mid-fight. There's very little downside to this Ash of War. Waves of Darkness function similarly to Golden Land. However, Waves takes a more close proximity role compared to Golden Land, as there aren't any long-range projectiles spawning after you use your Ash of War. There are, however, three gravity waves that form one after the other, surrounding your character with a force field of sorts that stuns your opponents for a pretty long time, on top of doing a decent amount of damage. In duels, this ash is great for exploding people that mash on hit. In invasions, a well-placed waves of darkness can almost immediately turn the tables on your prey if they get too aggressive with you. Furled fingers love to mash attack when hit. I'm sure most of you invaders watching already know that though. Thunderbolt serves the same purpose as Beast Roar. Thunderbolt trades the quick cast time of Beast Roar for increased tracking. While slightly slower than Beast Roar, Thunderbolt can't be strafed. This can prove to be pretty annoying as you can chain cast this Ash of War repeatedly. Doing this will force your opponents to roll in order to avoid taking damage effectively applying immense amounts of pressure from long distances. Great for making callouts on consumable uses and punishing opponents fleeing to either heal or use their blue flask. This tier is composed of ashes that have kind of niche uses, along with moderately good ones. The ashes listed here all certainly are worth equipping. They just don't perform quite as well as the ones listed in the tier above. These three didn't make it to S tier due to their detrimental weaknesses or having too much of a one-dimensional approach. The stamp siblings, while having great strengths and niche practical applications, both suffer from having a ridiculously large amount of end lag on their follow-up attacks. Committing to either of these two ashes is highly risky, as a well-timed roll can guarantee you being backstabbed. In ganks, leaving yourself open for a brief moment can often result in death. So it's important that you pick your moment wisely. Sweep has lower hyper armor values and upward cut, but works really well in combination with gravity. No, not gravity magic. I'm talking about the good old fashioned gravity. Sweep's launch distance is much longer than Stamp Upward Cut. Launching people off high places with Stamp Sweep is always a good time. Upward Cut will allow you to tank through higher poise damaging attacks, but lessens your chance of granting instant death with the help of a long drop. I'd recommend Upward Cut for duels before invasions. I've recently been using Flame of the Red Mains on my Gugs, and I've been enjoying it a lot. Using this ash after landing an attack is a great way to catch people rolling backwards to retreat. This conditions your opponents to roll inward in order to avoid being torched with flames, right into the loving arms of a colossal sword light attack. Mix it up with flame and light attack to keep your opponents guessing about which direction to roll. While this ash excels at what it does, it really only does one thing, which is spewing fire all over the place. The startup speed of this ash is a tad bit slow, and it has a hefty FP cost, but it does great damage when landed without any external buffs. It's great to see this Ash of War still flourishing even after its nerf. These ashes are all middling in their own way. If they don't have a sibling ash that is a direct upgrade, they forcefully compete with higher tier ashes at doing the same thing, only having niche uses as a saving grace. Barbaric Roar on Colossal Swords does not grant a 3 hit true combo like the smaller weapons. While the quick damage buff is always helpful, Warcry overshadows it almost entirely, still decently useful in virtually all situations due to its attack buff. 
Gregert's Roar could easily be put in S tier, but it's held back due to its highly dangerous and very slow cast speed. Increased damage, defense, and stamina recovery speed paired with access to the heavy attack and delight attack combo is almost too good to be true, until you realize that it is. Unless you can manage to kill your opponent before this buff runs out, you likely won't be using it again without being punished by a jump attack. I suppose they had to balance it somehow. It's more worth it in invasions, as there is much more room to make an escape to reapply your buff. Eruption looks really cool, but all it really does is roll catch, which can be done with the light attack or a crouching light attack. The lava pool should be much larger and last longer, so the skill can have more practical uses. Cragblade suffers from the same issues as Braggart's Roar. The cast time is really slow, making it dangerous to reapply during combat. The attack buff is nice, but there's not really much reason to want to increase the poise damage of a Colossal Sword. Not much can withstand a strike from a Colossal Sword anyways, so adding poise damage seems to be a bit redundant. Just use Warcry at that point. Earthshaker is a worse version of Golden Land and Waves of Darkness. There's virtually no reason to use it over its superior siblings. That being said, it can still provide a threatening AoE and a nice amount of hyper armor to win trades. Gravitas is in a really strange spot currently. On paper, it's a faster Waves of Darkness with a very compelling property. That being its negative pushback that pulls your opponent in. In practice, at least at the current moment, it's bugged. While Gravitas provides a large amount of stun, your opponent can cancel their stun animation into an Ash of War at an upsettingly fast rate, leaving the caster of Gravitas minus on hit. Heartbreaking. <laughs> Horalu's Earthshaker is a bit gimmicky. The initial shockwave can sometimes cause people to panic roll, but the time it takes to actually get a hitbox out that causes damage is rather high. This leaves you ample time to press a single button and completely nullify this Ash of War. That being the jump button. While risky to use, having an attack that covers 360 degrees around you is always nice to keep in your pocket during ganks. In duels, this Ash of War is far too telegraphed to pose any kind of a threat to someone paying attention to what you're doing. This Ash of War gets overshadowed by waves of darkness. Horfrost Stump, while fantastic on release, has been nerfed pretty hard. It still offers a good amount of area control, but the cast time has been increased significantly. This is not to say that it should be faster. Horfrost Stomp provides you an extra bit of reach where your Colossal Sword can't. You can use this Ash of War to threaten from a much longer range as free aiming this Ash where you think your opponent will roll can prove to be pretty annoying. Most of the time, this will goad your opponent into approaching you, which you can use to set up a whiff punish or trade. It's certainly not as threatening as it used to be, but still demands enough respect from your opponents to be useful. Everyone remembers Lightning Ram. Lightning Ram is a day one classic. On top of being the most outlandish weapon skill since the Channeler's Trident from Dark Souls, this Ash of War packs quite a punch when used at close range. The hyper armor on this Ash of War is damn near unbreakable, and can often frame trap people trying to panic roll away. Lightning Ram suffers from being far too telegraphed. On top of its slow startup speed, the very distinctive before using the Ash certainly doesn't help it. Regardless, it remains a great way to evaporate careless players. The Ashes of War seen here are either damn near impossible to land, or severely outshined by the other Ashes of War, leaving very little if not no reason to use them in both invasions and duels alike. Golden Slam is by far, and I say this with the utmost certainty, one of the Ashes of all time. Being predictable, telegraphed, and outlandishly slow, Golden Slam checks all the boxes you don't want to be checked when it comes to an Ash of War. Its semi-saving grace being its super armor and infinite poise damage. Colossal Swords have a plethora of slow predictable moves already. 
some of which have lower body invincibility. Golden Slam on Colossal Swords doesn't really complement the moveset. It feels a bit redundant. However, if for some reason you prefer to sit on your opponent's face, by all means. Everything stated about Golden Slam applies to Ground Slam as well. Endure on Colossal Swords uses a different animation than that of smaller weapons. This causes its viability to suffer greatly, as the animation is much slower and takes more time to finish or perform actions than other versions of Endure. In theory, it makes sense to have a heavier weapon require more time to use Endure, but balance-wise, it's entirely backwards. It's worth mentioning that Oath of Vengeance, while being the unique skill of a Colossal Sword, uses the Endure animation of smaller weapons like maces and straight swords, while providing that sweet stat buff and passive super armor for 3 seconds just like Endure. Oath of Vengeance is a superb skill, but it's not overpowered by any means. Which is why I think the animation speed and attack cancel windows of Colossal Endure should be sped up. In duels and invasions alike, you never want to allow yourself to become stationary if you can help it. Golden Vow is decent for what it is, an accessible version of a faith-based incantation that is usable on any build regardless of stats. While as a standalone skill can be useful, there's nearly zero reason to put it on a Colossal Sword. Why? Because Golden Vow, unlike Warcry, is a body buff, meaning once casted, will remain on you even if you remove your weapon, put it on a dagger or sidearm, use it, then switch back to your Colossal Sword. Forcing this ash into your Colossal Sword or any main weapon essentially robs you of using an Ash of War. Shared Order, while useful in PvE and cooperation, loses its practicality in duels and invasions. There's very little reason to use this ash to buff your weapon with Holy when you could use Sacred Blade. If you're planning to slap a buff onto a Colossal Sword, it's best if you choose a good one. Troll Roar has a lot of potential. It's essentially a physical version of Wrath of Gold, which is brain-numbingly slow and predictable. The roar can sometimes prove useful when fighting multiple opponents, as having a 360-degree hitbox helps to check aggressive gankers. It's just far too slow to hit anyone that's paying attention while playing the game. The follow-up slam, while not having a protecting 360-degree hitbox, has roughly the same startup speed as the roar. This Ash of War does very little to supplement the moveset of Colossal Swords, and it's very clear that someone at the balance team wasn't using their noodle when programming this move. Make it faster, or give it damage reduction for the startup duration. Vacuum Slice serves the same purpose as Beast Roar, but does so in a less effective manner. It's predictable, slower, and has non-existent tracking. The only thing it has over Beast Roar is that it inflicts a higher amount of poise damage when landed. This Ash forces you to rely on free aiming in order to have any chance of landing it. Any player paying attention to the game will not be hit by this Ash of War. Kick gets put in its own tier. This Ash of War is absolute trash. It's far too slow, zero forward momentum, no hyper armor, no damage reduction, no hidden properties, low poise damage. Hmm, it's almost like it was never intended to take up your Ash of War slot. Putting this on a Colossal Sword, while a hilarious thing to do, will ultimately jip you out of any useful Ash of War. Fun fact. Putting this Ash of War on a Colossal Sword as opposed to using the barehanded version of Kick increases the damage of Kick by somewhere near 20 times the amount. Too bad 1 times 20 is 20. If you manage to land this Ash of War and manage to stun your opponent with it, it will true combo into fan daggers or throwing knives. White Shadow's lore will not benefit you in duels nor invasions. And that just about sums it up. Just to remind you, this is entirely based on opinion and personal experience. 
There's no tournament results or data factored into this tier list. That being said, I'm sure a lot of you will both agree and disagree at some of the placements in this tier list, which is why I need you to sound off in the comments about why White Shadow's lure is secretly a sleeper S-tier Ash of War. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you around.